Okay, <clears throat> welcome back to my new Matplotlib tutorial. Um, in the first video of this series, I explained how you can actually plot data points that are stored in lists. And uh, in the previous tutorial, then I explained how you can plot functions. So now we want to combine these two things and I will show you now how you can do a very simple data analysis. So let's suppose we have measured some data. Yeah? You can actually take this um, as data measured in a lab course, for example. So in this case, we want to measure the velocity or the speed of a car. And the easiest way how we can do that is, of course, we put some checkpoints along the way where the car is traveling and then measure the timing at each checkpoint. So let's suppose we have one checkpoint which is 10 meter away from the, from the origin of our coordinate system where the car starts and the car needs one second approximately to reach there. And then the second checkpoint is 20 meter away from the uh, origin and the car needs around two seconds to reach there and so on. So we can assume already here that the uh, velocity of this car or the speed of the car is around 10 meter per second. However, we want to calculate this now to show uh, how data analysis in Python or in PyPlot works. And then of course, we also have the third and the fourth column, which represent the error in the timing uh, and the error in the distance. So here in this case, I assumed an error of 100 millisecond for the time and 50 centimeter for the distance, which is of course very large. But uh, the problem is if I make the value smaller and also then more realistic, the error bars will be also much smaller and then uh, one cannot identify them uh, in a good way. So the, the best thing I think is to then, after we have inserted all these values um, yeah, during our measurement into any spreadsheet program, whatsoever you like, in this case it's LibreOffice, then uh, you can just copy and paste all the values here and put them basically into an external uh, text file. So we can call it maybe data.txt. And of course, you can open this with any text editor which you like. Uh, in this case, um, it's the built-in text editor in um, Linux Mint. But of course, you can also uh, use any other one. And then you can just uh, press Control V and then all the data points are basically included. And what you can see here is that all the columns are separated with a tab. Yeah. Uh, so tabs and spaces are the best for our purpose. You can also use uh, comma separated values, but then it gets more complicated to read in the file. So I would really highly recommend to you have tabs in between. So you don't have to, of course, copy it first to us or write the values in a spreadsheet and then copy it into the text file. You can also directly create the text file from the beginning. And now, uh, because I'm using the German annotation, I have to basically replace all the commas here with dots. Uh, this is just uh, some part of the German system that we use comma for the decimals. And now um, we can save that again. And yeah, basically our data file is now ready to be analyzed. And we can now start with the fun part, which means we can really write our Python script now. And we call it tutorial3.py. So we will start now as we have started also in the last parts. We write here import matplotlib.pyplot splt. And we can also import directly numpy uh, because we will need it later. So the advantage of numpy is that it has a built-in function that can be used to read in text files. And that is called load txt. So we want to store then each column in a separate list in order to plot them later. So we can write basically x, y. These are the first two columns, as I said, and um, x, r for x for the error in x direction, which will be then the error in the timing, so the third column, and the error in the y direction. Uh, this is the error in the distance, and this we will call y, r. And then we can write here that this should be equal np. So these will be the return values from this function, load txt. And then the first parameter of that is the name of the input file, which is in this case data.txt. And uh, then we have to add an additional parameter, which is called unpack. And this we have to set to true. This is important. If we don't do that, then it will not separate the values in the correct way and we will get later an error message. So whenever we want to separate separate a text file into different columns, then we have to write unpack true. And now for just to, for 
uh, to check that we can write print x y x r and y r and see whether whether all values are stored correctly mm -hmm. so we can write now python 3 tutorial 3 dot pi and now you can see four lists and the first one represents the values in x direction the second one in y direction and the third and fourth one are the errors so now the only thing which we have to do is to write plt and in this case we don't have to write plot but we want to see error bars also so we have to use the function error bar and now we can in principle simply put in these two lists uh, x and y and then show if we run our script then we see that the uh, the output looks exactly how it looked before in the previous tutorial so of course we also have to add the error bars uh, which means we have to write here for the arguments xr which is the uh, error in x direction and the name of the argument is in this case accidentally the same as we have chosen for our array so xr is equal xr and of course for yr which should be also equal to yr and now we can run it again and we see now here our four five data points uh, with the error bars of course this line which we have seen there should not be there because this is just mathematically not correct to have it there and it does not give you any uh, further information so what we can write now is here uh, line style equal equal none and this means that uh, it will not be displayed uh, so if we run it now you can see that now we can only see the error bars but in, in addition to the error bars maybe it would be nice to have some data points also visible so what we can write here is uh, marker equal o in the form of a string so this means that now we add some circular shaped uh, data point and then we do that uh, we can see that they are quite big compared to the error bars so uh, they are just hiding the error bars and therefore it would be maybe a good idea to shrink the size a little bit and there we can write then marker size equal for example 3 I think this is a good value which I have checked before and this seems to work uh, quite nicely so um, now we can see the data points and the error bars and what I usually also like to have are some caps at the ends of the error bars so what we can write here uh, cap size equals 3 and um, when we do that then we can see very nicely that we have our caps here at the end you can play around with the values a little bit um, maybe you can also enlarge the figure and see whether it still looks good or you can also shrink the size and check whether it still looks good so um, by this you can uh, you can play a little bit around with the different sizes nevertheless maybe we can also change the color of our uh, data points uh, to black so last time I said that B stands for blue and K now stands for black so now it looks I think a little bit nicer so before we go to our fit I would also like to add some labels so we can write again PLT X label uh, and there we have the time in seconds and for the Y label we can choose S in meter and maybe we can also add some title let's call it data analysis okay just to check whether we didn't make any mistake it looks quite good so now we come to the uh, to the part where we make the fit now so we want to as I said calculate the speed from that and in this case we just have a linear dependency between the y uh, the y values and the x values so what we can use is just a linear regression and the function which we need for that we don't have to write, uh, write ourselves it's already implemented in this numpy package so what we can write here is for example mb which is the slope and the offset and this should be equal to np dot polyfit this is the function and there we have to write x and y so the first two arguments are basically the lists for the data points for the coordinates of the data points x and y and then we have to define the degree of our fit function and as i said we want to have a linear dependency so we can just write one if we write zero we would get a horizontal line if we write in two we will get a parabolic shape function if we write three then we will get a cubic one and so on but in this case uh, just one is enough 
And sometimes it's also important that, for example, when your errors are not constant for all values, but you have different errors for different data points, then it's important to add some weighting factors. Uh, so you can write here additionally one argument w equal and for example you want to take the error in the y direction as the weighting factor you can write y equals uh, w equals y error yeah? uh, in this case it does not matter yeah, because all our error bars have the same length but in some cases it might be important to do it like that so now actually uh, we can print out these two values m and b to check what happens and when we do that we can see now that our plots they look the same and now for the slope we will get a value which is very close to 10 but not exactly 10 and we get also an offset uh, which should be in principle zero but it shows a value here so it means that we should also take a look at the error of our fit uh, to make sure that there is nothing wrong and in order to do that we have to modify this part a little bit we have to write here as another parameter uh, cough for covariance matrix equal to true. And this means that we can actually now return the covariance matrix and therefore the error in M and B. So we have to write here, uh, not MB anymore, but for example, P, which includes both parameters M and B. So it's a list. And uh, V as a second uh, return value, which is then the covariance matrix. So here we could write, for example, M, equal to p0 and b equal to p1 and then the error for the slope is then in this case um, the 0 0 entry of our covariance matrix so it means the upper left value and the error for b for our offset is then in this case the lower right uh, value of our covariance matrix so it would be v11 and then we have to write here, or we want to give out also now the errors in M and B, so we can write here MR and BR. And if we run now our script, you can see that uh, now we have here the values for M and B, and this is the error of M, which is quite uh, large, but of course we also have only a limited amount of error, uh, limited amount of data points. And uh, yeah, the B, the error in B is even much larger. Yeah? So we could optimize this maybe a little bit, but for the, for the time being, I think it's perfectly okay. So what we will do now in the next step is that we want to plot this uh, regression line that we have just calculated. And for that, we can write here, maybe we just call the list now XX in order to differentiate it from uh, the first list that we created with the name X. So we can write here XX equal NP lin space one five and this is what i explained in the last uh, tutorial or in the previous tutorial uh, that actually we can um, we can use this in order to create a list which starts at five and ends which starts at one and ends at five which are exactly the boundaries of our data points and uh, now we can write here yy equal to m which we have defined here times xx plus b and this should give us basically a straight line and then uh, we can also write here then below that uh, plt uh, plot yy in this case it's a simple plot sorry xx yy and when we plot this then you can see now very nicely we have here our linear regression um, okay let's let's beautify it a little bit more so let's give here the color red and uh, maybe we want to have dashed line so it's better to practice i think the different commands or different parameters again and again so we will write here line style dash and i think now it looks a little bit more beautiful so now we also want to add a legend of course so like last time we have to add a label here which we call uh, maybe fit function and here we will call it um, data points And now we can run it. Sorry, of course, we also have to print our or we plot our um, uh, legend. So we have to write here plt dot legend. And when we do that, we can see here our nice uh, legend. And as you can see, still it's not perfect because the line is not exactly matching with the limits that we have chosen here or, or which Python automatically chooses. 
So uh, it would be nice, I think, to, to set the limits according to the data points and the line. Uh, and for that purpose, um, we can write before we show the plot again, we have to get access to the axis. So um, similar to the previous video, we have to write AX equals PLT dot GCA to get the two axes. And uh, then we have to tell Python to set these axes according to the margins of our data points. So we can write here margins x equal to zero. There should be no margin basically. And y equal to zero. So for, for the x and y values, the margin should be removed and the plot should fit exactly into our canvas. So when we do that, now you can see that it looks quite nice already. Yeah, and in this case, I think we can maybe also enlarge our line a little bit more. I don't know whether it looks good or not. Yeah, I think now it's perfect. Now the data point is, is not uh, on the edge. So now I think uh, we have a quite nice uh, plot that we could even directly export and put it in uh, our protocol that we have to write for th for the lab course, lab report basically. So maybe one other thing which I would like to add here because I think it's important to know, and this is the grid function. So if we write here plt.grid and we run this, then you can see that now it automatically inserts a grid, which um, yeah basically fits to the data points more or less. So uh, now it's easier to read later the values, yeah? uh, especially when you when you print this, then for, for someone else who is reading that, it's, it's maybe sometimes difficult to identify where the data points are exactly positioned and how much uh, far away they are from the fit and so on. So if you do it in such a way, then uh, I think it looks much better. So um, yeah, maybe I can make another tutorial one day about fitting because there are many possibilities. So at, for the time being, I showed now how to create a linear fit, which is of course not covering all topics, but most of the physics data can be basically adjusted in a way that you have a linear dependency between Y and X. So let's suppose you measure the radioactive decay of a probe then you will get, of course, a negative exponential correlation. But you can then simply calculate uh, the logarithm of the y values and then put these values uh, on the y axis. And uh, when you do that, then uh, at the end, you will get again a linear dependency and you can calculate the slope from that. And then you have to convert the slope basically only in order to get then uh, the decay time, for example, or the decay parameter. And this is uh, very beneficial for, for many purposes. You can use that. And uh, so you need other kind of fit functions, um, even quadratic one. Uh, you can also just plot the square root of this value, for example, and then again use a linear dependency. But uh, there are maybe some situations where you have to use some other fit functions and this I'm going to explain in one of the next videos. But for the time being, I would like to stop here. Everything which I like to show, I have shown. And if you like it, then uh, yeah, please hit the like button, uh, subscribe my channel if you have not done so far. And I hope uh, if you like it, then uh, you stay tuned till I yeah, submit my next tutorial lesson. See you later.